Have you ever seen a lighthouse? A lighthouse is a tall building and through that light comes and spreads all around. Now from there also light comes in a straight line. All right, now the next thing. In the morning when you are dressing up, how do you tie the knot of your necktie? Or maybe how do you comb your hair? Do you do it without a mirror or with a mirror? Generally, we use mirror while dressing up. Why so? Of course, you will say because we can see our image. It becomes easy because we can see how it is coming. How are hair, where are hair going? That's right. But what is this looking into mirror called? Or how does that help? That is what we are going to study now. And this is called reflection. When light falls on a mirror, then what we find is that there is a same kind of thing in the mirror. And what is this called? This is called an image. And the thing of which the image is formed in the mirror is called the object. What does this reflection mean? You must have heard that story where a rabbit was able to kill the lion because he took the lion in a well and the, when lion saw his own image in water, he thought it was another lion and he jumped to kill that lion. These are all reflections. Basically what happens in a reflection is that the direction of the light falling on the mirror changes. This change in direction is called reflection. So let's define reflection. The process by which the direction of the light falling on the mirror changes is called reflection. So what you see in the mirror while combing your hair or while tying your sari or any such activity is what is called a reflection. Even when you go for your hair cut after your hair have been cut the your uh, beautician or your barber shows you the back of your hair with the help of two mirrors. Isn't it? I will tell you more about that. Now if you want to study reflection, what you do is you can take your mom's torch or still better the bigger torch which you can hold like this, not the tubular one. Now take some black paper and cut out three slits in it. Then paste or cover the torch with the help of this black paper with slits. So how will this look? If this is the torch, these are the three slits. Now take a white paper, spread it on a table and put a mirror vertically on it. You can fix it on a stand. Now you adjust this torch in such a way that from these slits light falls on the mirror. You can adjust the distance between the mirror and the torch. And you adjust it in such a way that light falls or spreads on the mirror. Now what do you see? That all the three rays are coming back to you. These are the reflected rays and this is what is reflection. When you go to higher classes, you will also study the laws of reflection. And you will find there is a relation between the rays that fall on the mirror and the rays that are reflected. Now let us do another activity. In this case, what you will need is a candle. Whenever you are burning anything or you are using a candle, it's better to have somebody older than you along with you. 
so that you are able to take precautions. Not that you are not capable, I am sure you are very capable, but still two is fun to be. So involve your mom in it or your father on a Saturday or a Sunday. So what you can do is you will take a mirror and in front of this you keep a burning candle. What you will see is in the mirror also you will see a candle. Now this is an image and this is an object. Now what you find is that the image is just like the object, same, it is directed in same direction that is the flame in both the cases is upwards. So such an image in which is in the same direction is called an erect image. So what we find is that in a plane mirror there is an erect image. Now another interesting thing, this time instead of candle what you do is you take a chess board. If you do not have chess board not to worry, you can just take a cardboard and on it you can make 8 into 8 squares. That means both vertically as well as horizontally there should be 8 squares which means in total there should be 64 squares. Now after you have done that, then what you can do is put a sharpener or any object in front of the mirror and observe on which square you kept the squ your sharpener. That is why we take a chess board or a pattern of squares so that you can exactly measure where was your object. And what you find is if this object was on fourth square then the image formed will be also on the fourth square. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is the distance between the object and the mirror is same as that of as that between mirror and the image. So third now you have learned three things about light. First was that light travels in a straight line, then the mirror or a polished surface can change the direction of light and third is that the shining surface or a polished surface can reflect light and form an image. Finally, the distance between the image and the mirror is same as that between object and the mirror or in other words that the image is formed at same distance as the object is from the mirror.